the first step is gonna be making sure that the vehicle is on park and the parking brake is off. To lift off the vehicle, in this case, we're gonna use a scissor jack. You can also use a floor jack, but in this video, we're only gonna explain how to use a scissor jack. Look for the pinch well in the car. In this particular case, the pinch well is covered by the side skirt and it's okay to use it um, as long as you make sure you're lifting the car by the pinch well. Lift the car just enough to remove some weight from the back tires, but not enough that the back tire is not touching the ground. Using a 17 millimeter socket and a breaker bar. Brake to work on all five lug nuts, but do not remove at this point. As you can see, I just step on the breaker bar since the torque on this lug nuts is supposed to be 81 foot pounds, and it's just easier to use your own weight rather than try it to muscle it out. Once you've broken the torque on all five lug nuts, proceed to lift the car all the way up until you can fit a car jack stand underneath. To place the car jack, you gotta be looking for hard spots on the frame. In this case, I used the end of the frame where it connects the frame to the suspension. Once you have found an appropriate spot, that's not going to be too much in the way when you're working on the brake components. Lower your lifting jack onto the jack stands. At this point, caution is recommended and make sure that the jack stand is not slipping on the frame and it's on a solid spot where it's not going to move after you remove the lifting jack. Repeat the whole process on the opposite side a quick recap of what you got to do on the opposite side is to make make sure to stabilize the car with the lifting jack but not lift it all the way brake torque on the lug nuts and then lift the rest of the car the whole way to lift the entire rear end once you've done those things put the jack stand at the same spot but on the opposite side to lift in a symmetrical fashion. Once again lower the scissor jack onto the jack stands and your car should be lifted the whole way. Using a 17 millimeter deep well socket and a ratchet, remove all five bolts holding the wheel onto the wheel hub. Remove the wheel and tire assembly. Use a flathead screwdriver to remove the retainer clip from the caliper by prying it off. Then again, use a flathead screwdriver to pry off and remove the upper and lower caliper guy pins rubber caps Use the 7mm Allen bit and a breaker bar to break torque on the caliper guy pins. There's two of them, one upper one and a lower one. The two guy pins are 
normally torque to 21 foot-pounds. Use the 7 millimeter Allen bit and a ratchet to remove the guide pins. At this point you can see that I used my nail and my thumb to push out the guide pin the rest of the way. I do this several times just to aid the guide pin and get it out. Out goes the lower guide pin. Out goes the upper. Now lift away the caliper from the caliper bracket. I use my hand and the bottom end of a ratchet to push it out. At this point I use my hands to separate the pads a little bit from the disc. And then I move the caliper to the side left it hanging, being careful not to bend the brake hose too much. Then I use a flathead screwdriver to push the pads out of the way. Using brake cleaner or methylated spirit only, at this point is cleaning time. I personally clean every single point of contact where the brake pad contacts the brake caliper bracket and the exposed metal part of the piston with brake cleaner and then using a rag to take off any dirt and debris. Covering your face at this point is suggested since some brake pads actually contain asbestos and it's better not to inhale any of the dust that blows out when cleaning them. Using the brake caliper wind back tool set, find, find the end of the tool that fits the piston. Every car model and make uses different fittings for its pistons. At this point fit the tool in between the piston and the caliper housing. I used an adjustable wrench to tighten up the tool in between the piston and the caliper housing just a little more. It tightens up counterclockwise as you saw and then at this point you start turning the handle of the tool. It's gonna push the piston in while turning it clockwise. Winding the piston into the housing, make sure the boot doesn't turn with the piston. Once you bottom out the piston, you will feel a little bit of resistance in the tool. At this point, you can loosen the jam nut and the tool will be released. Prepare 
the brake pads by applying a little bit of grease on the back where the piston touches and where the caliper housing touches on the inner and the outer brake pad. Then apply some grease where the brake pad touches the brake caliper mounting area. Do this on both brake pads. You can also put some synthetic grease on the caliper bracket where the brake pads slide into. Slide the brake pads into the caliper bracket. Obviously the friction area should be facing the disc. In this particular model, the inner brake pad has a spring for the purpose of anti-rattle. Slide the outer brake pad as well with the friction area obviously facing the disc. Slide the caliper on top of the brake pads as well. Use some grease around the guiding pins as well. Using your hands, place the guide pins in the place where they belong. To tighten the caliper against the caliper bracket. Using a 7mm Allen bit and a ratchet, tighten the guide pins until snug. Try to tighten the upper one and the lower one as evenly as possible until snug. torque wrench and the 7 millimeter allen bit torque the upper and lower guide pins to 21 foot pounds or 28 newton meters in the upper caliper guide pin you might need a universal joint to fit the torque wrench in the space needed refit the rubber caps on the upper and lower guide pins With a little bit of patience, reinstall the retainer pin into the caliper. Reposition the wheel and tire assembly on the wheel hub. Place the bolts one by one into the wheel and tire assembly. Tighten every single bolt in an even fashion in a starlight crisscross pattern. At this point, I torque up to 40 foot pounds. And then I put the torque wrench up to its 81 foot pound, the final torque needed for the wheel assembly and I got it as close as possible without surpassing that torque. Remember to tighten in a star-like crisscross pattern. Once the brakes are done on the other side, 
follow the exact same process when putting the tire assembly on the other side. Raise the car just enough to clear the jack stand out of the underneath of the car. Remove the jack stand. And proceed to lower the car all the way down until the tire touches the ground. Remember, when lowering the car, the bolts holding the tire assembly should be as close as 81 foot pounds as possible. Before proceeding to do the same on both sides, torque all five bolts to 81 foot pounds with the torque wrench in a crisscross pattern. The same procedure is going to be used on the other side to remove the jack and torque the tire assembly to its final torque. And now you can say you are done.